Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, uh, we're talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, 2018 NFL Draft Class uh, based on analytics. And in this video, we're going to go through um, every single pick that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, selected and look at their look at them through the eyes of production and athleticism data to determine what their potential upside is based on how past players in the past performed in these various uh, data points. If you're new to the channel uh, and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, so if you're not familiar familiar with what market share, da market share data is or explosive or body training score, or any of the other things I'm talking about in this video, you can just go to the link in the description. You can also go to other videos I've done in the past on the subject of analytics. And uh, with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the first pick of the draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Invite the Via, uh, defensive tackle out of uh, Washington. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 66.63 solo tackle score, uh, 54.67 sack score, and a 36.19 uh, tackle for loss score. Uh, doesn't quite hit all pro potential or pro bowl potential based on nose tackles since 1989, but does hit at least the starter thresholds. Uh, and when you look at the uh, starter averages, the all pro average, pro bowl average, and starter average fall short in terms of solo tackle data, sack data, and TFL data, even when it comes to starters. Um, he just kind of falls short in terms of tackle for loss data, etc. I understand a lot of people say that nose tackle production doesn't matter. But when you actually look at the data, you look at the, the nose tackles that went to the NFL and became high quality players and even starters, production does matter in nose tackle. So again, uh, when it comes to Vitavia, he does have big question marks in terms of his production data. And in terms of athleticism data, he only did the 40 yard dash and uh, very good 95.73 in terms of his speed score, but didn't do the explosive lower body strength score or the flexibility testing. So he didn't like to do the short shell three count, vertical broad jump, stuff like that. Very good speed score, but without the explosion data and the flexibility data, it's really hard to project much more than this. Um, I do think that Vitavia does have athletic upside because of his speed score. I think ultimately you're looking at a long-term starter versus a guy that has a chance to become a multiple all-pro, multiple pro bowl defensive tackle. And could very likely disappoint because of how poor his production data is. Then of course you get to Ronald Jones, running back out of USC. Um, when you look at his production data, 63.97 in terms of market share production. Uh, doesn't quite hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold in terms of his production data, but does hit at least the three-time pro bowl area. Um, and when you look at the averages at the position, the average all-pro score, average pro bowl score, and average starter score um, doesn't, you know, is definitely below the average score for a starter and a pro bowl player when it comes to his overall data. And athleticism-wise, I'm really not going to get too much into his athleticism data. He ran about 4-6 at the Combine. Um, there was reports that he, you know, kind of had a pulled hammy and stuff like that. And didn't really do much else at the USC Pro Day to really improve on things. Um, so, honestly, when it comes to athleticism data, I would just kind of throw that stuff out of the window, um, unfortunately, with him. So, I can just go by production data. And based on his production, I think it's he's just a guy that uh, is, is unlikely uh, to become... A, uh, a long-term starter uh, or at least a Pro Bowl player because of how poor his production is. So he could become a long-term starter, but um, there definitely is a lot of question marks in terms of his athleticism data because there's just no athleticism data to really say much about him. Then of course we get to MJ Stewart, a uh, cornerback out of North Carolina. Uh, when you get to his production data, uh, 78.35 in terms of solo tackle data, 87.06 in terms of pass flexion data, pretty strong profile. Uh, when you look at his production traits and when he gets his athleticism data 67.16 in terms of explosiveness 62.10 in terms of speed and 70.05 in terms of flexibility um, this is by far one of my favorite picks the bucks made good production at least pro bowl level athleticism traits when you look at it uh all uh, collectively could end up becoming more of a long-term starter than a pro bowler but still pretty strong profile here from mj stewart i think he's a very good shot to become a successful nfl player then, of course, you get to Carlton Davis, a cornerback out of Auburn. Uh, when you get to his uh, production data, 66.04 in terms of uh, solo tackle data, 75.22 in terms of pass selection data. Good production data here as well. Uh, when, it comes to, when you get to Carlton Davis, athleticism wise, he does have some question marks in terms of flexibility. Um, 73.42 in terms of explosiveness, 65.63 in terms of speed, and his flexibility score was 32.48. 
uh, doesn't quite hit the all pro threshold or probable threshold when it comes to flexibility testing does hit at least above the starter threshold but I think Carlton Davis is more likely going to be a long-term starter uh, than a multiple all pro slash probable type just because of how poor his flexibility testing is and of course we get to Alex Kappa offensive tackle out of Humboldt State uh, when you look at his athleticism traits 15.55 in terms of explosiveness 21.68 in terms of speed and 19.69 in terms of flexibility for his size doesn't hit anywhere near the all-pro threshold or probable threshold in terms of his data, but does hit at least above the bottom and starter threshold. But when you look at the averages of the position, the average all-pro score, the average Pro Bowl score, and the average starter score, woefully below what those averages are. So in many ways, I think it would be very surprising if Alex Kappa became a long-term starter uh, because of how poor his athleticism traits are. There is a chance he could become one, kind of a long shot type of thing, but... Um, he definitely is a guy who lacks a lot of tools necessary to survive in the NFL level based on his athleticism and traits. Then, of course, you get to Jordan Whitehead, defensive safety out of Pittsburgh. When you look at his production data, 79.21 in terms of solo tackle data, 58.58 in terms of interception data, and 44.49 in terms of pass deflection data. Doesn't quite have the pass deflection uh, production of a all pro or pro bowl safety. Uh, when you look at the averages of the position, also lacks the pass deflection data necessary to become a starter in many ways. Uh, and when you get to his athleticism traits, 53.34 in terms of explosiveness, 49.66 in terms of speed, and 28.41 in terms of flexibility for his size. Looks closer to a starter than he does an all-pro, so it's probable player based on his athleticism traits. His production traits look closer to a starter than a high-quality player as well. But I think in many ways, Jordan White has someone who will either become a starter or will end up becoming more of a backup slash rotational guy at best at the NFL level. Um, so not a ton of upside here when it comes to Jordan Whitehead. Then, of course, you get to Justin Watson, wide receiver out of Pennsylvania. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, uh, 96.14 in terms of explosiveness, uh, 92.24 in, ter in terms of speed, and 73.46 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, very, very good athlete, uh, pretty decent shot to become a long-term starter. High quality upside may be a question mark just because of the fact that he came from a low-level school, you know, FCS level. Um, there haven't been a lot of multiple All-Pro slash Pro Bowl wide receivers to come out of that lower-level division in a while. You know, you're talking about guys like Andre Reid, Jerry Rice, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, but uh, does have good athleticism traits. So we'll see what happens with him, but he does have good production. He does have good athleticism. Then, of course, we get to Jack Cicci, uh, linebacker out of Wisconsin. Uh, when you look at his production data, 96.30 in terms of solo tackle data, which hits above the all-pro and pro bowl threshold. Uh, looks closer. He kind of looks in between an all-pro slash pro bowl player when you look at the averages at the position. So, again, very good production data. And when you look at his athleticism traits, the main one he was able to do was his explosion score, which is a 65.59 in terms of uh, explosiveness, which does hit at least the Pro Bowl threshold in terms of Pro Bowl potential. Um, didn't really do the speed, the 40-yard dash, so really hard to determine much else with him. But he is a guy in, who is very intriguing. You know, has good athleticism traits, at least one good athleticism trait. Has very, very good production, and I think he may be someone who ends up becoming a long-term starter or better um, based on his overall profile. So overall, when you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers draft class, I think it's not that bad. I do think there's some players here and there where I, there's a lot of question marks. Uh, there's not a lot of high upside in this class. There's not a lot of players that have the ability to become multiple all pros slash pro bowl types, at least guys that check all the boxes in terms of traits. Uh, but they do have a lot of guys that could become long-term starters to successful players. Um, so from that perspective, I think the Bucs did well to get some starters here and there. Guys like MJ Stewart, Carlton Davis, Fight the V, uh, um, Jack Cicci even, if he's healthy, are guys that I think have a good chance to become long-term starters. Guys that are a bit of a question mark are guys like Ronald Jones, Justin Watson, Alex Kappa, Jordan Whitehead especially. Uh, we'll see what happens with this class, but ultimately I think it's not terrible, uh, but there definitely was not a lot of home runs here. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. 
and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.